The road splits here. Mama thinks we should go right, because it's the right way. Hmm, but left also might be the right way. If it wasn't clear by now, Mama doesn't actually know. Let's get started on its restoration, shall we? I wonder what kind of story we'll find this time. Once, two sisters with lovely ebon hair lived in a lush and verdant land. They hunted for food in the forest and did their best to each support the other. The elder sister had been born in the woods and was an archer of rare skill. When their parents died, she began teaching the younger how to hunt. The younger looks up to her and wants so badly to test out her new skills. This thought fills the older sister with warmth as she follows after her sibling. Suddenly, the elder sibling hears a beast cry out from the direction of her little sister. She sets off after her at a frantic pace. The savage beast looms over the prone girl and makes to attack. I'll cut down everything in my way. As an arrow penetrates the beast's tender flesh, it turns tail and flees. There was no way her little sister could have taken down the massive creature alone. Trying to calm her, the woman removes her silver hairpin and places it on her sister. It is a keepsake of their mother, one the young girl has long desired. Thanks, sis, she says, beaming. Next time, 
It'll be my turn to protect you. of this weapon is all about that woman. I feel like we've seen her somewhere before. What could this black barrier be? acting outside of the scarecrows. Well, let's just square them away as best we can as we go forward, okay? What on earth could those dark creatures be after? I'm sorry, child. There are just so many things that Mama doesn't know. Look, something's out there. What could it be? There are so many mysteries in the cage, aren't there? This second scarecrow will hold another part of the weapon's memory. Done with their hunting, the black-haired sisters decide to return home before dusk. The younger has caught a small bunny, and the elder a large boar. It is a typical day of hunting for the pair. They only notice the disaster when they come to the hill that overlooks the town. Flames billow forth, and the chilling snaps of distant gunfire can be heard. The woman immediately thinks of the war that is raging in the neighboring nation. She tells her sister to stay put and goes to see what has happened for herself. The town is oddly still, save for the incessant crackle of flames. The woman gasps as she takes in the grisly sight before her. All she can see are bodies. 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 I'll cut down everything in my way.
After defeating the soldier, she hears a voice. Her worried sister has followed her into the fires of the village. Enemy soldiers cry out all around them. As the woman feared, the war from the nearby nation has finally found them. Strange and fearsome men surround them on all sides. Impact. Heat. Pain. Her little sister screams. As the woman's consciousness flickers out, two words from a soldier reach her ears. Sort them. I see. This weapon speaks of war. I suppose it's rare for the memories in these weapons to be peaceful ones. That's a little sad. This room is a bit strange, isn't it? Can you see down there? There are so many paths going every which way. It's like a maze. I wonder where the other paths lead. The black-haired woman regains consciousness in a world enveloped by haze. She hears a faint voice. It sounds similar to her little sister's voice, but also different. Wrong. My sister. I have to save my sister. The woman's dim memory slowly become clear. The blow she'd taken, her sister screaming, the soldier's words. Her only sister, her only family. She must save her. As she runs, the woman's world is enveloped in a shimmering wall of white.
When the woman wakes anew, she is lying on the floor of an unfamiliar prison. Something is terribly wrong. She looks down at her body and stifles a gasp. One arm and one leg have been replaced by mechanical substitutes. And her black hair is now as white as snow. Where is my sister? She dashes off through the dim prison in search of her missing sibling. She dispatches both her cell door and its guard with equal ease. Only then does she realize the truth. Her body is now a terrible weapon. As this knowledge sinks in, darkness envelops her. I'll cut down everything in my way. Here we go. When she interrogates the dying guard about her sister, he grins madly and says, Our kingdom will invade all. Every country will bend the knee to our might. Then we'll experiment on the survivors and turn them into beautiful killing machines. Oh yes, they will be sorted. With these final words, the soldier dies. The woman begins to run. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. She repeats the mantra as she runs, praying that somehow her sister has escaped this fate. of the woman in this weapon. She lost her arm and leg because of her dark past. That was... Looks like that monster ran off somewhere. Anyway, the next memory we find will be the last for this part of the cage. 
We're almost there, child. Just keep going. As the woman exits her prison, she beholds a town stained red with both flame and blood. She is in a strange land, one she does not recognize. But she must find her sister. The woman runs and runs and runs. I'll cut down everything in my way. I saw that. That's a child. Upon hearing the wail, she dashes toward the sound. The thing standing before her was once her sister. But now, all trace of her former self has been lost to the sorting. I'll cut down everything in my way. Her transformed little sister trembles, as if trying to remember something. The moment her sister is cut down in front of her, the woman loses all control. Even when her enemies are no more than mangled hunks of flesh, she cannot stop. Finally, the woman cradles her sister in her arms and gazes at her blood-stained face. Their hair, once dark as night itself, was now pure white. 
yet the hairpin still glinted from atop the sister's head. The woman was alone. Her fate was sealed. And so she swore a vow to her sister. The fires of her revenge would rage until they consumed the entire kingdom. People need goals and hopes in order to live their lives. And for her, revenge was itself a form of hope. spirit of desire and the drive to move forward. There are still many things you need to reclaim. Come now, the next fragment is waiting for you.